chapter 17. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than an house full of sacrifices with strife. A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame, and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. The fining pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lie. Lips of prince. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding striketh hands, and become a surety in the presence of his friend. He loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. He that hath a froward heart findeth no good, and he that hath a perverse tongue falleth Falleth into mischief. He that beggeth a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. Also to punish the just is not good, nor to strike princes for equity. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Opening Sentence Proverbs 17 verse 1 better is a dry morsel, and quietness therewith than in house full of sacrifices with strife, finding the theme, the strife of foolish choices. A house full of quietness is better than a house full of strife. The phrase better than indicates that a choice can be made between the two. The word strife is found three times in this chapter, verses 1, 14, and 19, and if has already been introduced in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 10, verse 12, Hatred stirreth up strifes but love covereth all sins. Proverbs 15.18 Am wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Proverbs 16.28 Am froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. Strife is defined as contention and opposition. These three situations bring about strife, hatred, being quick to anger, and being a talebearer. Three choices can appease strife, love, being slow to anger, and being discreet or not repeating tales. Choosing to keep quiet, the topic of verses 9, 27, and 28 is a sure way of avoiding strife. A foolish son who makes the wrong choices will stir up strife in the home. The Lord tries. The Lord discerns between a wise servant and a son that causes shame because he knows what is in his heart, and he can righteously judge his actions. Proverbs 17, 2-3 A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame, and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. The fining pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. The child Samuel is an example of a servant who rose to a position of leadership in the nation of Israel, because he walked in the wisdom of God. The sons of the high priest, Eli, were cut off from their exalted positions because their foolish choices brought shame upon the priesthood. See 1 Samuel 2 verses 11 to 36. A Wicked Doer Proverbs 17 verses 4 to 5 A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. A foolish son is a wicked doer, 
a liar and the person who takes heed to lies are both wicked and foolish. A son who rejoices at the strife of another and who blames God for it will be punished. Crown and glory. Proverbs 17 verses 6 to 7 Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. In the scriptures, people are often described as crowns, but only when they display the wisdom of God's glory in their actions and speech. Psalms 103 verse 17 Excellent speech is never found in the mouth of a fool. The gift of wisdom and the perversion of justice. Proverbs 17 verse 8 A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth, and the only gift that truly prospers wherever it turns is the wisdom of God. Proverbs 2 verse 6 But men will use a gift, such as a precious stone, to bribe a judge into accepting a false testimony and ruling in his favor. This perversion of justice is a sub-theme of Proverbs chapter 17, as will be shown in verses 13, 15, 23, and 26. Causes of Strife A talebearer causes strife, Proverbs 16, verse 28, Dutton. Proverbs 17, 9, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends to cover a transgression in this context is to keep quiet about it. Proverbs chapter 17 begins with quietness versus strife in verse 1, and it ends with a fool who is counted wise when he keeps his mouth shut in verse 28. To refuse instruction causes strife. Proverbs 10 verse 17, 13 verse 18, 15 32. Proverbs 17 verse 10 A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. Rebellion causes strife. In Proverbs 17.11 An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Scripture defines rebellion as rejection of God's word. See 1 Samuel 15 verse 23. In Proverbs 16 verse 14, an example of a cruel messenger was the wrath of a king. In Israel's history, God sent Gentile kings against his rebellious nation in order to punish them. See Isaiah 10 verses 5 to 6, A fool causes strife. Proverbs 17 12, Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man, rather than a fool in his folly. It is better to meet with an angry mama bear than to meet a fool acting foolishly. One can only harm the body, whereas the other can destroy the soul. Injustice causes strife. Proverbs 17 13, Whoso rewardeth evil for good, Evil shall not depart from his house. This reference to house refers back to verse 1, where quietness is to be preferred over a house full of strife. Joseph's evil treatment by his brethren and King Saul's persecution of David are Old Testament examples of rewarding evil. For good. Meddling with strife. Proverbs 17 verse 14 The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore leave off contention, before it be meddled with. The two other proverbs refer to meddling with strife. Proverbs 20, 3 It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. Proverbs 26, 17 He that passeth by, and meddleth with strife belonging not to him, is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Meddle means to intrude upon, to interfere with, to distress. The example given in this proverb is likened to a dam which holds back water. When only one sandbag is removed, a small amount of water begins to drain out. But within a short time the water gains strength and begins to rush out with fury, which causes great destruction. This proverb is a warning against meddling in the affairs of others. Perversion of Justice Proverbs 17 verse 15 He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. In the law of Moses, the rulers of Israel were given the responsibility and authority to condemn the evil and justify the good. To do the opposite was the rejection of God's law and a perversion of justice. Deuteronomy 25:1 If there be a controversy between men, and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. A fool cannot by wisdom.
Proverbs 17, verse 16, Wherefore, is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? God is the source of all wisdom, but a fool has no heart to seek out God or his wisdom. Simon the sorcerer in the book of Acts is a biblical example of just such a fool. When Simon saw the Holy Ghost fall upon the Samaritans after Peter and John laid their hands on them, he offered to purchase this power from them. Simon was a fool with no heart for God's wisdom, but only a desire for selfish gain, and they fair shoe in the flesh. Galatians 6 verse 12, Acts 8 verse 20, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Adversity Proverbs 17 verse 17, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. There is a time of adversity and calamity that will come upon the house of Israel for their disobedience to God's word. This is the first use of the word brother in the book of Proverbs, and it is associated with adversity. When compared with the other scriptures, two things become clear. A brother cannot necessarily be trusted in times of trouble, and Jesus Christ is the only friend who can be trusted. Micah 7 verses 6 to 7 For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Mark 13.12 Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. And children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. A fool's covenant. Proverbs 17 verse 18 A man void of understanding striked hands and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. Surety was covered extensively in chapter 6. A foolish son becomes surety and causes strife for his house, loving strife and seeking destruction. Proverbs 17 verse 19, He loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. Absalom is the perfect example from the Old Testament of one, a son who exalted his gate and two, a son who caused strife and destruction of himself and others. Absalom foreshadows the coming Antichrist that will exalt himself above God and persecute the righteous remnant of Israel. Mischief and Sorrow Proverbs 17 verses 20 to 21 He that hath a froward heart findeth no good, and he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow and the father of a fool hath no joy. An evil man has a froward heart, and he is an abomination to God. Proverbs 11 verse 20 A liar has a perverse tongue, which brings mischief upon himself and those who follow him. A man who begets such a son will have a house full of strife. King David and his son Absalom are a perfect example. Dry Bones Proverbs 17 verse 22 A merry heart doeth good like a medicine but a broken spirit drieth the bones. According to Proverbs 15 verse 4, the cause of a broken spirit is a perverse or lying tongue. The inner man can easily be deceived, and the spirit broken by false doctrine. The prophet Jeremiah warned that the heart is deceitful and wicked. A man's heart can be stimulated into false merriment through the use of wine. Wine is also a symbol of doctrine in the scriptures. In Ezekiel chapter 37, dry bones represent the nation of Israel who was dead and dry because of their rejection of the word of God. Of the 15 references to Mary Hart in the King James Bible, the majority of the references are negative. In contrast, Psalms 34 colon 18, 51 colon 17 and Proverbs 15 verse 13 indicate that having a broken spirit due to godly sorrow about sin is a positive response. And God is able to heal a broken spirit. Isaiah 61 verse 1. Pervert Justice Proverbs 17 verse 23 A wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. The bribe of verse 8 results in the perversion of judgment in verse 23. The word is nigh thee. Proverbs 17 verses 24 to 25 Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father, 
and bitterness to her that bear him. In Deuteronomy and in Paul's letter to the Romans, God made it clear that his word is well known in the hearts and consciences of all mankind. A fool overlooks the truth, which is right in front of him, makes excuses for disobedience, and walks in his own way. Such a foolish son causes strife in the home. Deuteronomy 30 verse 14 But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. Romans 1 colon 18-20 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Punish the just. Proverbs 17 verse 26 Also to punish the just is not good, nor to strike princes for equity. Only a judge or a king who has been given authority by God can enforce punishment on an evildoer. The king or judge who obeys God's word will punish the wicked, not the good. He will not be tempted to pervert justice by taking a bribe and making a financial gain. Conclusion Proverbs 17 verses 27 to 28 He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool when he holdeth his peace is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. This chapter concludes with a proverb about keeping the mouth shut, which is a sure way of avoiding strife, even for a fool. Summary The house of Israel had a choice either lead a quiet and peaceful life, or lead a life filled with strife. The nation of Israel is God's son. They could choose to follow his instructions and be wise, or he could choose to reject God's commandments and be foolish. Dispensational Consideration Man is sinful and must be punished for his wickedness, otherwise God would not be a good and just judge. In every dispensation a judge that justifies the wicked and condemns the just is an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 17 verse 15 However God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit promised each other before the world began that it was necessary for God's just Son, Jesus Christ, to be condemned in order to justify wicked mankind. A sinner can come to God for forgiveness. But what about the pain he has caused and the damage he has done to others, to himself, and to God? If God simply forgives him, the injured parties would consider it an injustice, and rightly so. In the dispensation that existed before the world, God purposed a way whereby he could justify the wicked. He would pay for the sin debt himself. In due time which God purposed in advance, God became flesh, lived a perfect sinless life, and gave his life as a blood sacrifice for the sins of the world. He conquered death and offers eternal life to anyone who will trust in what he has done. The book of Romans refers to God as the just and the justifier. Romans 3.26 to declare, I say, At this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Those who have trusted this payment that God made on their behalf can live a life of thanksgiving to God for His mercy, and they can rest assured they have forgiveness of all their sins. Life Application The book of Proverbs is written for the nation of Israel, but there is cross-dispensational application for all who read it. Apart from the Law of Moses, there are still general principles that apply to everyone today. For example, the Lord will try the hearts of all mankind. To pervert justice by accepting bribes or by speaking lies is always wrong. The Apostle Paul addresses believers today who are living in the dispensation of grace, instructing them to be quiet and do your own business, because meddling in the affairs of others will bring about unnecessary strife. Begetting a foolish son or daughter still causes grief and sorrow so it is important to bring up a child, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Finally, it is still possible for a fool to be thought wise if he will only keep his mouth shut. Proverbs 18 verse 15 The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. In chapter 18, 
The wise son seeks the wisdom of God, but the fool seeks to know his own heart. Proverbs chapter 17 homework. Read in 1 Samuel 2 verses 11 to 36. The sons of Eli bring strife upon the priesthood and the house of Israel. God raised up the servant Samuel as priest over Israel when Eli's house was cut off. Knowing this helps us understand the meaning of Proverbs 17 colon 2 and define, use a concordance to find the word naughty to gain a biblical definition of the word. Compare what you find with the definition given in Webster's 1828 dictionary. Define, search for the word mock in a King James Bible. Read through the four verses in Genesis and the six verses in Job where the word is found. Read through the five verses in which the word mock is found in Proverbs. Make a list of five words or phrases associated with the word. Afterwards, read the definition found in Webster's 1828 dictionary and compare your results. Concordance search. Find both crown and glory as used together in a King James Bible. Read through the results and see how many of the crowns refer to a person or a group of people instead of a literal crown. Note that most verses indicate that the crown is glory itself. Concordance search. Use blue letter Bible to find the exact phrase an evil man. Notice that this phrase is first found in chapter 17 of Proverbs. Study its use in the books of Matthew and Luke where Jesus distinguishes between a good man and an evil man by what is in his heart. Concordance search. Find the three occurrences of bear and whelps used together in a King James Bible. To understand what is meant in Proverbs 17 verse 12. What words or phrases are associated with this type pictured by a mother bear? Rewarding evil for good. Joseph and David are Old Testament examples of men who were rewarded evil for good. King David wrote two psalms that prophesy of future events in which he specifically mentions being rewarded evil for good. David and Joseph both pictured Jesus Christ and the evil treatment he received when he came to do good to his brethren, the nation of Israel. 1 Samuel 24 verse 17 pictures King Saul as the Antichrist persecuting David. Also read Psalms 35 and 109 for further study. Concordance search. Do a word study on metal by typing metal into Bible Gateway or metal into Blue Letter Bible. What words are found associated with the word metal in these verses? Compare your findings with the definition found in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Concordance Search Find every use of the word abomination in the book of Proverbs to understand what it means and make a list of things that God considers to be an abomination. Concordance Search Find every use of brother in Proverbs. By considering these verses, we can understand that most references to brother are negative and are often contrasted with that of a neighbor or friend. He that exalteth his gate. Read 2 Samuel 15 verses 1 to 6 to understand the flattery and cunning used by Absalom to win over the hearts of the twelve tribes of Israel away from his father, King David. The gate is the place of judgment in Israel. In scripture, there is often a past, present, and future foreshadowing of events. Absalom represents Lucifer in the past, when he won over the hearts of a third of the angels and led them in rebellion against God. Absalom also foreshadows the coming Antichrist, who will lead the whole world, Revelation 12 verse 9, in rebellion against Jesus Christ, the true King. Concordance Search the words froward and heart are found together five times in a King James Bible. Read the verses and list five words that are associated with a froward heart. Concordance search, a wicked man, is found in the King James Bible ten times, first in the book of Job and last in the book of Ecclesiastes. For further study, read and consider each of these references. A wicked man is often seen to prosper physically in his lifetime but he receives eternal consequences for rejecting the counsel of God.